Microsoft and Quantinium just announced a significant breakthrough, the creation of a logical qubit, a quantum bit that's far more stable and reliable than its predecessors. This development could mark a turning point in the race to build practical quantum computers, with profound implications for fields like material science, drug discovery, and artificial intelligence. Let's dive into exactly what a logical qubit is and why it is such a game-changer. Microsoft and Quantinuum Partnership Quantum computers are different from regular computers. They use quantum bits or qubits instead of the regular bits we use today. While normal bits can be either 0 or 1, qubits can be 0, 1, or both at the same time, thanks to a property called superposition. This allows quantum computers to process huge amounts of data very quickly. However, qubits are also very fragile and prone to errors. This is where logical qubits come in. Logical qubits are made from combining several physical qubits in a way that reduces the chance of errors. The goal is to make them as stable and reliable as possible, so quantum computers can run complex calculations without making mistakes. A few months ago, Microsoft and Quantinium started working together on this. They used Microsoft's Qubit Virtualization System with Quantinium's Advanced H-Series IonTrap Qubits. The IonTrap technology is one of the ways to build qubits, using ions known as charged atoms that are held in place by electric fields. By combining these two technologies, they were able to create logical qubits that are much more reliable than before. This achievement is significant because reliable logical qubits are essential for quantum computers to solve important real-world problems. Quantum computing has the potential to revolutionize areas like drug discovery, material science, and cryptography, but it requires stable and error-free qubits to do so. With this new development, Microsoft and Quantinium are bringing us closer to that goal. How it all began At first, Microsoft and Quantinium were able to create four logical qubits by using 30 physical qubits. Physical qubits are basically the building blocks of a quantum computer, but they're prone to errors. To overcome this problem, companies use multiple physical qubits to create one logical qubit, which is more stable and reliable. The exciting part of their initial success was that the logical qubits they made were 800 times better in terms of error rate compared to the physical qubits. In other words, the logical qubits made far fewer mistakes, which is extremely important in quantum computing. Microsoft found this accomplishment impressive, but they wanted to push their technology even further to see if they could improve it. Their determination paid off. With more research and effort, Microsoft and Quantinua managed to expand their work. Now, they have created 12 logical qubits using 56 physical qubits. They did this using Quantinuum's advanced H2 quantum machine, which is based on iron trap technology. What's even more impressive about this new achievement is the high level of fidelity they reached. Fidelity in this context means how accurately the quantum operations are performed without errors. In their case, they achieved a fidelity of 99.8% for operations involving two qubits. This means that almost all of the two qubit operations they performed were correct, with very few mistakes. This progress is a huge milestone because quantum computers need highly reliable qubits to work on complex problems like drug discovery, climate modeling, and secure communication. By achieving 99.8% accuracy and creating 12 logical qubits, Microsoft and Quantinium are making significant strides toward practical, real-world uses of quantum computing. The teams from Microsoft and Quantinium took a big step forward in quantum computing by demonstrating something called entanglement of logical qubits. Entanglement is a special property in quantum physics where two or more qubits become connected in such a way that the state of one qubit can instantly affect the state of the other, no matter how far apart they are. This is a key feature that makes quantum computing so powerful compared to regular computers. What made this demonstration even more special was that they used a complex arrangement called a greenberger horn zeilinger state. This is more intricate than the simpler entanglement method called a Bell state, which had been used in earlier experiments. The GHZ state involves multiple qubits being entangled at once, creating a more advanced and challenging setup. It's like going from simple teamwork to highly coordinated teamwork, where every team member, or qubit, is tightly linked with the others. Despite the complexity, the teams managed to keep the errors very low. The error rate for this entangled circuit was just 0.0011. 
To put this in perspective, the error rate of physical qubits, the basic building blocks of quantum computing, was 0.024, which is much higher. So, the logical qubits they created were far more accurate and reliable. This is a major achievement because lowering the error rate is crucial for quantum computers to perform useful tasks. One of the big challenges in quantum computing is managing errors since qubits are very sensitive and can easily be disturbed. But with such a low error rate, these experiments show that we are getting closer to achieving fault-tolerant quantum computing. Fault-tolerant quantum computing means that even if some qubits make mistakes, the system as a whole can still work correctly. This is important because it would allow quantum computers to perform deep, complex calculations reliably. By reducing the errors and demonstrating more sophisticated entanglement, Microsoft and Quantinuum are laying the groundwork for future quantum computers that can handle real-world problems like cracking encryption, simulating molecules for new drugs, or solving climate models. This progress is a key step towards unlocking the full potential of quantum technology. With advancements like these, quantum computers are becoming more capable and reliable, moving us closer to a future where we can solve problems that today's computers can't. The process. The process started with identifying the active space of a catalyst, which is the part of the catalyst responsible for its chemical reactions. To do this, scientists used high-performance computing simulations. HPC allows computers to process large amounts of data very quickly, which helps scientists understand complex systems like catalysts. After figuring out the active space, they used logical qubits to simulate the quantum behavior of this active space. Quantum behavior is how particles like atoms and molecules behave at the smallest scale, and it can be very difficult to predict using regular computers. This is where quantum computers come in handy because they are better at handling these kinds of calculations. Once they ran the quantum simulations, they got measurement results that helped them understand how the catalyst behaves. But they didn't stop there. These measurement results were then fed into an artificial intelligence model. The AI model used this data to learn and improve its understanding of the system. Eventually, the AI was able to provide a very accurate estimate of the ground state energy of the catalyst. The ground state energy is the lowest possible energy that the system can have, which is important to know for understanding how stable or reactive the catalyst might be. This entire process of starting from HPC simulations, using quantum computing to simulate the catalyst's behavior, and then training an AI model to give accurate results, represents a huge breakthrough. It's the first time that quantum computing, HPC, and AI have been combined to solve a scientific problem from start to finish. This achievement shows that quantum technology isn't just theoretical anymore. It can actually be used to tackle real-world scientific challenges. The current results of this study don't yet show what's called a full scientific quantum advantage. Quantum advantage is when quantum computers can solve problems that classical or regular computers simply can't handle. In other words, we haven't quite reached the point where quantum computers can completely outdo classical computers in all areas. However, these results do show that quantum systems have the potential to outperform classical methods in specific situations. In this study, a hybrid approach was used. This means the scientists combine both quantum computing and classical computing methods. The combination of the two helps boost the overall performance. While quantum computers still have limitations, especially since they're new and developing, this hybrid method shows how quantum technology can already be useful in certain areas. One of those areas is chemical computations. Classical computers are very good at solving many types of problems, but they can struggle with complex chemical systems, especially when it comes to understanding how molecules behave at the quantum level, the smallest scale. These types of problems require an enormous amount of computing power, and classical computers can only go so far before they hit a wall. This is where quantum computing comes in. In this study, using quantum computers made the chemical computations more accurate, especially for problems that are very difficult for classical computers. For example, quantum systems can model the behavior of molecules in more detail than classical systems, helping scientists predict chemical reactions or discover new materials more precisely. While quantum computers aren't yet fully surpassing classical computers in all tasks, this study highlights how they can complement classical methods. By enhancing the accuracy of tough computations, quantum technology is already showing its value, and it's likely that as these systems improve, they will become even more powerful and useful. Future Possibility 
Microsoft has big plans for its quantum computing platform called Azure Quantum. The company says it is committed to improving and expanding this platform to fully support different types of qubits, which are the building blocks of quantum computers. Two types of qubits Microsoft is focusing on are the neutral atom qubits and topological qubits. Neutral atom qubits are qubits made from neutral atoms, which are atoms that don't carry any electric charge. These qubits are controlled by using lasers to arrange and manipulate them. One of the benefits of neutral atom qubits is that they can be packed closely together, which makes them very efficient for building large quantum systems. They are considered highly promising for scaling up quantum computers, meaning we could eventually build much bigger quantum computers with more processing power. Topological qubits are another type that Microsoft is interested in. These qubits are different because they are designed to be more stable and less prone to errors. The idea behind topological qubits is that they store information in a special way that protects it from being easily disturbed by outside factors. This could make topological qubits more reliable for quantum computing. However, creating topological qubits is still a major scientific challenge, and Microsoft is investing in research to make them a reality. By integrating these diverse types of qubits into its Azure Quantum Platform, Microsoft helps to create quantum computers that are more reliable and can scale up to handle much larger problems. Reliability is essential because quantum computers need to perform operations without making too many errors. Scalability is also important because the more qubits a quantum computer can handle, the more complex calculations it can solve. Microsoft believes that quantum computing will eventually become powerful enough to tackle some of the world's biggest challenges. This includes things like discovering new medicines, developing cleaner energy sources, solving complex climate problems, and even creating secure communication systems. But to get there, quantum computers need to become more practical and scalable. And this is exactly what Microsoft is working towards with its Azure Quantum Platform. If you've made it this far, let us know what you think in the comments section below. For more interesting topics, make sure you watch the recommended video that you see on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.